The 19th century Russian esotericist Elena Petrovna von Hahn, more popularly known as Madame Blavatsky or HPP, came from a noble family in Ukraine. As a child, Madame Blavatsky would often have visions and displayed clairvoyance, as well as other metaphysical phenomena. Years later, she traveled throughout Europe and the Middle East studying under various teachers and Sufi saints. While in London, United Kingdom, she met one special teacher, an Indian yogi named Master Moria, who later directed her to go to New York in the United States. Once there, she founded the Theosophical Society in 1875 with other like-minded individuals. Theosophy meaning divine wisdom refers to an experiential knowledge that comes through spiritual, not intellectual means. The Theosophical Society strive to study this wisdom underlying all the religions and promoting the universal brotherhood of humanity. The movement gained much international support. Madame Blavatsky wrote several important books on Theosophy, including Isis Unveiled, The Secret Doctrine, The Key to Theosophy, and The Voice of the Silence. In 1885, she started to write The Secret Doctrine, which was finally published three years later in 1888. The Secret Doctrine has been acknowledged by many as one of the most remarkable books in the world. It is considered to be the Bible of Theosophy, the source book of the esoteric tradition that outlines the fundamental tenets of the Secret Doctrine of the past ages. Published as two volumes during her lifetime, the Cosmogenesis and Anthropogenesis, the Secret Doctrine explains the origin and evolution of the universe and of humanity through an account of root races dating back millions of years. Although the writer of the Secret Doctrine, Madame Blavatsky, often expressed that she was only the compiler of ancient wisdom that was passed on to her. The true authors of the work were her teachers, the Mahatmas, or great souls, who were the guardians of the secret wisdom of the ages. We will now share with you from the Secret Doctrine, Cosmogenesis, the Seven Creations. The Fourth Creation The Mukhya, or primary, as it begins with series of four. Neither the term inanimate bodies nor immovable things, as translated by Wilson, gives a correct idea of the Sanskrit words used. Esoteric philosophy is not alone in rejecting the idea of any atom being inorganic, for it is found also in orthodox Hinduism. Moreover, Wilson himself says all the Hindu systems consider vegetable bodies as endowed with life. Charachara, or the synonymous Shtavara and Jangama, is therefore inaccurately rendered by animate and inanimate sentient beings and unconscious or conscious and unconscious beings etc locomotive and fixed would be better since trees are considered to possess souls the mukhya is the creation or rather organic evolution of the vegetable kingdom in the secondary period the three degrees of the elemental or rudimental kingdoms are evolved in this world corresponding inversely in order to the three prakritic creations during the primary period of Brahma's activity. As in that period, in the words of Vishnu Purana, the first creation was that of Mahat or intellect, the second was that of the rudimental principles, Tanmatras, the third was the creation of the senses, Aindriyaka. So in this one, the order of the elemental forces stands thus. 1. The nascent centers of force intellectual and physical, two, the rudimentary principles, nerve force, so to say, and three, nascent apperception, which is the mahat of the lower kingdoms, and this specially developed in the third order of the elementals. These are succeeded by the objective kingdom of minerals, in which this apperception is entirely latent, to redevelop only in the plants. The mukhya creation, then, is the middle point between the three lower and the three higher kingdoms, which represent the seven esoteric kingdoms of cosmos and of earth. The fifth creation, the Tiryaksrutas or Tairagyonya creation, that of the sacred animals, corresponding on earth only to the animal creation. That which is meant by animals in the primary creation 
is the germ of awakening consciousness or of a perception that which is faintly traceable in some sensitive plants on earth and more distinctly in the protistic monera. On our globe, during the first round, animal creation precedes that of man, while the mammalian animals evolved from man in our fourth round on the physical plane. In the first round, the animal atoms are drawn into a cohesion of human physical form, while in the fourth, the reverse occurs according to magnetic conditions developed during life, and this is metempsychosis. This fifth stage of evolution, called exotherically creation, may be viewed in both the primary and secondary periods, one as the spiritual and cosmic, the other as the material and terrestrial. It is archabiosis, or life origination. Origination so far, of course, as the manifestation of life on all the seven planes is concerned. It is at this period of evolution that the absolutely eternal universal motion, or vibration, that which is called in esoteric language the Great Breath, differentiates into the primordial first manifested atom. More and more, as chemical and physical sciences progress, does this occult axiom find its corroboration in the world of knowledge, the scientific hypothesis that even the simplest elements of matter are identical in their nature and differ from each other only in consequence of the various distributions of atoms in the molecule or speck of substance or of the modes of its atomic vibration gains more ground every day. Thus, as the differentiation of the primordial germ of life has to precede the evolution of the Dian Chohan of the third group or hierarchy of being in primary creation before those gods can become embodied in their first ethereal form, Rupa, so animal creation has for the same reason to precede divine men on earth. And this is why we find in the Puranas, the fifth, the Tairyagyone creation, was that of animals. The sixth creation, the Urtvasrutas creation, or that of divinities. But these divinities are simply the prototypes of the first race, the fathers of their mind-born progeny, with the soft bones. It is these who became the evolvers of the sweet-born, created beings, explains the Vishnu Purana, although they are destroyed in their individual forms at the periods of dissolution yet being affected by the good or evil acts of former existences, are never exempted from their consequences. And when Brahma produces a world anew, they are the progeny of his will. Collecting his minds into itself, yoga willing, Brahma creates the four orders of beings, termed gods, demons, progenitors, and man. Progenitors here meaning the prototypes and evolvers of the first root race of man. The progenitors are the pitris, and are of seven classes. They are said in exoteric mythology to be born of Brahma's side, like Eve from the rib of Adam. Finally, the sixth creation is followed, and creation in general close by. The seventh creation. The evolution of the Arvaksrutas beings, which was that of man. The eighth creation is no creation at all. It is a blind, for it refers to a purely mental process, the cognition of the ninth creation, which in its turn is an effect manifesting in the secondary of that which was a creation in the primary, Prakrita creation. The eighth, then called Anugraha, the Pratyaya Sarga, or intellectual creation of the Sankhyas, is the creation of which we have a notion in its esoteric aspect, or to which we give intellectual ascent, Anugraha, in contradistinction to organic creation. It is the correct perception of our relations to the whole range of gods, and especially of those we bear to the Kumaras, the so-called ninth creation, which in reality an aspect or reflection of the sixth in our Manvantara, the Vaivasvata. There is a ninth, the Kaumara creation, which is both primary and secondary, says the Vishnu Purana, the oldest of such texts, and cannot be trusted. Quite so, but they are no more untrustworthy than any other date, as assigned by the Sanskritists, so famous in the department of arbitrary fancy. Benevolent viewers, it's been a pleasure to have your company on today's From the Secret Doctrine, Cosmogenesis, The Seven Creations, Part 2 of 2, on Words of Wisdom. May God's love and blessings 
be showered upon you and your loved ones always. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada WOW. 저희 방송은 다양한 언어를 제공합니다. 다음을 참고하세요. suprememastertv.com slash schedule 그리고 suprememastertv.com slash wow